What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Realistic Career Mode. It's episode number two return today on the back of our first three games in the Premier League. One win, one draw and one loss. That's sort of the form we're going to be expecting this season. Very inconsistent and making our first sign with Jack Clark coming in from Sunderland as well. There's loads to get through today. We're going to play through as much of sloggy season as we can today. And we're starting off with three scouting updates as well. Let's see what we got. Where there's four pretty decent players from England, including this guy I'm quite keen on, Nicholas Knight, six foot six as well. Uh, but we'll continue to scout just for now after only one month. Noah Antoine looking very good here. We'll give him one more month's worth of scouting and see how he looks after that. And as for Wales, no one making a cut this month. We'll continue scouting on these two players here uh so yeah loads to get through today man and for those that don't know and are new to the channel sloggy season what is sloggy season it's this it's september october november and december as well the first half of the season where there's not that much at stake but there's tons of tons of games especially when you become a european side we'll play for as much as we can today uh trying to finish around mid-november early december i would say so loads to get through let's just get straight into our first game it's brentford away going for our first away day victory of the season and back-to-back -back wins uh on the back of the win against spurs come on Bournemouth. So three games in Brentford, pointless. Haven't got a single result as of yet. Three straight losses, but they'll be targeting a win in this one as the shocker fires in the opener. You know, we talked about Dominic Solanke possibly moving on in the summer. This guy moving on is, I wouldn't call it a dead cert, but a very strong possibility of all the links, especially to Arsenal as well. Ivan Tony with the opener. I know that, I know that feeling so well. Normally we'll just shoot on the other for Brentford in front. Yeah, for new viewers to the channel, Ivan Tony is one of the biggest docs legends, if you will, on my channel. Signed him for uh, Sheffield United. Back in FIFA 20 from Peterborough United. This was before he was the Ivan Tony we all know and love now. And um, yeah, he uh, he got the nickname the Shocker. And as Sheldon Baptiste makes it too, he was just so impossible to stop in my blade side. And right now, Brentford are looking impossible to stop. Sheldon with the second and already with two goals down against the Bees. Corner. Bournemouth looking for something before the break to give us a glimmer of hope here. Remain whips the ball in and Billings header is well saved by Strakosha and pushed behind for a corner. Still still down by two. I don't predict us getting many wins away from home, to be fair. I feel like they've got the vitality. We'll need to make that fortress away from home. I can already tell it's going to be a really difficult start. On the cusp already of back-to-back -back losses on the road. Yep, not exactly how he wanted to follow on from the win against Spurs. But again, this is what I'm expecting this season. When we go away from home, a point against anyone would be considered a good result. Because I don't see us winning many. Back-to-back -back losses on the road. And a tough reminder, this is the first season of an RTG. We've got a long way to go. Right, next up, Chelsea at home as we return to the Vitality Probably the most unpredictable team in the Premier League right now. You never know what side is going to turn up against you. Hopefully, it's a side we can beat here to make it seven points from nine in our first three home games. Come on, Bournemouth. Come on, win that, win that, win that, win it in. A good start this from Bournemouth. Still tied at 0-0, but Clark on his debut! It's a dream debut for Jack Clark. Perfect start. For the ex-black cat, Foz is in front, Bournemouth lead. He's a serious player, Jack Clark, and, and um, Sunderland fans know this all too well as NATO holds on to that ball there. They're, they're desperate for him to stay after coming in on a permanent deal from Spurs after a successful mini loan spell. So many Premier League clubs looking at him. I have to say, if he doesn't move on in the summer, I will be surprised. I definitely see him in the Premier League next year no matter what. And right now, well, he's looking the real deal here on his debut for us. He's got one goal and he's just found Tyler Adams that could be part of the build-up for a second. It's a wonderful move from Bournemouth and it's Sinistera to wrap it up. No, puts it off target. But I tell you what, starting the season off, I'm playing some excellent football here. Forget Andoni ball, this is Dox ball. Lovely football, just couldn't finish the move. You'd also find this out if you're a new viewer to the channel as well. It's a bit of a running joke, but if you ever see me doing like a really nice passing move, orchestrating a lovely build up, just know it's not going to hit the back of the net. I'll get a shot away, but I'll fluff it. I'll put it off target, I'll put it straight at the keeper. It's a, it's a bit of a. It's a bit, I, I call it a joke, but it's not really a joke, it's reality. It just seems to always happen as Goretzka is denied by Kirk is off the line. And we shall hold on to the one goal lead, Haynes to break. What a result this will be to go along with a Spurs win as well. Back-to-back -back wins, back-to-back scalps. 
and seven points taken from nine in our first three home games. Yeah, that's the vitality needs to be a fortress. Let's just say, so far, so good. Well, I said you can't predict Chelsea right now, but what you can predict is Bournemouth's home form. Like an alphabet of only 25 letters, there's no L's. Three games, one draw, two victories. Looking so strong here at the Vitality. But whilst it's all well and good getting the points at home, we also need some results away as well. Let's see if we can get our first one here against Brighton at the Amex. Come on, Bournemouth. I feel like Bournemouth are looking at the Brighton model and trying to see if they can replicate it themselves in this kind of new era, if you will, with the Cherries. Um, and I think most clubs are probably thinking that right now. You know, how can we be a bit more like Brighton? The meteoric rise they've had from the championships and now playing European football, all the talents they've bought in and sold and replaced and subsequently money which has been made as profit. Oof. Um, yeah, they're, they're, they're definitely a team that we want to sort of follow in the footsteps as well. Um, if you haven't, by the way, I've talked about this before, but perhaps for your new viewers to the channel, um, there's a podcast called The High Performance Podcast. I listen to it quite a lot with uh, Jake Humphrey. He used to do sport on BT Sport as well. Um, he has a great episode with the CEO of Brighton, Paul Barber, and it's a fascinating, absolutely fascinating listen. You don't need to be in business, you don't need to be in sport, but you'll still be able to take away a lot of great positives and things which can really help you in your own life from, from that conversation. I highly recommend it. I'll leave a link to it in the description. It's a great insight to how Brighton are run, how he does things, and why the club have been so successful in recent years. Yes, mate, well, he's solid, he is. Absolutely solid, and he's just put Jao Pedro in pain. So, we're going to put the ball out of play as the Brazilian is, uh, is going to be forced off there as well. That tackle by Savani, I tell you what, though, like Bournemouth, even though we haven't started off brilliantly defensively, two clean sheets and three now, to be fair. Zabani, I do see as like a long term centre half in this team. His tackling is, is brilliant, he, he wins so many duels. Sanessi is going to. Oh, I'll tell you what. So again, new viewers to the channel. This is something we do every now and then. Go for halfway line goals. I've only scored one in all my years doing YouTube. If that's on target, that's in. If that's on target, that's in. Is it shaved the crossbar? No, I think it drops just in. Oh my goodness. We hit the bar in the last save with Almeria. If that's on target, that's in. It's just a fraction wide. Steel's nowhere near it. This has been quite a poor game, all things considered. But if we can defend this last attack from Brighton, which we will through Senesi, it is going to be our third clean sheet in four. And to be fair, only one loss in four as well. First point on the road two. We will take that. I often say this, when you get a draw in football, you always need to consider the situation. We haven't had a single point away from home. Brighton are a European side at the Amex, tough place to go. That is a good point. Sometimes it's a bad point, sometimes it's a good point. This is definitely a good point. Right, let's keep it rolling. Next up, Burnley at home and a great chance to progress here to the last 16 at the Carabao Cup. A good cut run is always nice when your league form is erratic. Let's get the job done and reach the fourth round. Come on, Bournemouth. Oh, where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? We'll add that. And Enesu now, who scored two in the previous round away against West Ham, should make it one. And does. He's only on loan here from Getafe. But to be fair, based on his start in the Cups, He's taking his chance when called upon. Three goals in two, one nil up. He's got more goals than Dominic Solanke right now. Dom's only got the one and Una has three. Albeit in the cut, but they're still against Premier League sides. You know, first away against West Ham and now at home to Burnley as well as Lewis Cook finds Remain. And Cliver on the turn, looking for Unal again. Oh, great save by Muric. He is in the mood right now. You often see that when a player's on loan, they have a bit of a resurgence in form. I mean, Jesse Lingard at West Ham is the best example of Zuna. He's denied by Muric again, this time to go onto the bar. But it's like they're playing for a future elsewhere, if not at their parent club, you know. Right now, I'm liking Zuna a lot, man. He's looking solid for me. Almost uh, six on the clock. Wonderful ball, though. And Mike Trezor plays it across. And there is the level of Izeki and Dooney. Hadn't conceded a goal in our past two. But as Burnley find a level of five to go, that should force penalties. In the Carabao Cup, it goes straight to pens, no extra time. And that looks as though it's going to, what's going to be the decider to see who goes through to the, uh, to the last 16. Such a shame as well, it's in complete control. As Unal says, Gaffer, hold that forward! 
Eddie Soonow is on absolute flames. Turkish delight and a vitality. Well, I know he's not scored for Bournemouth yet in real life, but he's on absolute flames for me. Four goals in two cup games, and he's the reason why we are into the quarterfinals. Almost threw it away right at a the death there, but in the end, Bailed out once again by NS. So what we'll do is we'll draw for the uh, for the last 16. I think directly afterwards, and we'll see who we'll be facing here. This is a great opportunity to go far in this cut competition. Whilst again, it doesn't count towards the objectives. We're still going to be pleased enough with the run so far. And in the last 16, we've been drawn against Brentford away. Another Premier League side once again away, and the Bees, who of course we lost to in the episode opener in West London. That'll be a tough one, but we'll look for revenge in that game now. Right, next up, Arsenal at home as Enesu now gets his first Premier League start, aiming to replicate his cup form in the league here. Come on, Bournemouth. Yeah, an encouraging run from the Cherries. Only one loss in our last five games in all competitions. But this is Arsenal. Arsenal going for the title for the second straight year. One of the best teams in the league. As Martinelli did one trick too many and I've just given the ball away and this time he says one trick too many docs Don't think so mate. I'll still blast it in and give the Gunners the opening goals He spots some uh, away fans in the home end there uh, Awful for me one trick too many then gave the ball away was a bind this turn though Oh, see you later to beat Sanessu and the finish as well Arsenal in front and um, yeah, th th these are games whilst I you know, I expect the home to be a bit of a fortress I would still take a point. Already a goal down. Could go two goals down early. The Gunners looking in control. As Jorge oh, Jorginho, I was going to say, scuffs the shot a little bit, but Nato won that one back. Into the near post, squirms underneath his body. 2-0. Corner, Bournemouth. 2-0 down, 25 minutes in. Looking for a response here. And we do look pretty decent from set pieces. As oh, who now? Almost got that first league goal. Hits the woodwork. Bounces across the goal line. Ramsdale claims it's still 2-0 down. Second time he's hit the woodwork in two games, man. He could have six goals already. Jesus. Jorginho. Bang. Game over. 3-0 Arsenal of eight to go. Listen, we, we weren't going to go undefeated at home all season long. It was going to happen at some point. First L in Bournemouth and delivered by a title contender. Yeah, can't win them all. 13th place in the table right now. To be fair, this is about where I expected to finish as well. So quite a realistic start, I'd say. Right, three more scouting updates as we enter October. Let's see what we got. We're from England. We'll continue scouting on these four players just for now. But from France, I might make Noah Antoine my first player in the academy because that potential doesn't seem to be dropping by much looks very good indeed he'll become the first player in the Bournemouth Academy and our last scouting updates from Wales let's see what we've got anyone good anyone certainly gonna make the Academy so far I would say no so we'll continue the scouting on those two players Tom Payne and Kai Hughes just for now so what is Noah Antoine's uh, starting overall his potential will still say 81 94 but 57 57 uh, left wing, left foot. Okay, yeah, looks uh, looks looks pretty solid. Uh, just 16 years old. Right next up, Everton away. No points deduction like in real life, but see, we should be targeting wins against both home and away if we want to stay well clear of the bottom three. Come on, Bournemouth. Yeah, I have to say, just very briefly on the uh, points deduction Everton were handed. Well, firstly, it's annoying that you can't add it into the game, you know, to, to make your saves a bit more realistic. I don't know why they can't just, like, have it as an option. You know, you don't have to have it on. But like, for example, at the start of the save, you can choose where the trance window is open. You can choose whether the European competitions are in effect from season one, whether international management offers come in. I don't know why you can't just say, yeah, Everton's point of deduction. Do you want it on or do you want it off um, for the realism? But I have to say, just real briefly on that, I'm really glad that... Oh, great work from Romain to flick it through to Solanke. I'm really glad that on appeal, as Dom fires it off target and should have got his second of the season, it was reduced from 10 to 6. I'm not saying that the points deduction was the wrong punishment from the Premier League, but 10? It looks as though that is going to do it. And another game where I failed to get Solanke a goal. Had a golden chance with him, totally blew it. And in the end... Oh, I don't believe it. We lost it at a death. Abdullah Decore with a rocket, and the Toffees have won it. In the Premier League, if you don't take a chance, you'll be punished. We missed a sitter. Decore scores a screamer. Everton win it at a death. I've always been a big fan of Abdullah Decore, man. He's tall, he's big, he's strong, he's got great technical ability, and he comes up with big moments in big games. 
including that one right there. Right, final game, uh, Wolves at home as bottom placed Wolves come and take us on and Gary O'Neill returns to the Vitality Stadium. Let's get back to winning ways after a tough mini patch. Come on, you cherries. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Solanke, Clark, for his second, sets himself and drills it in. From the Black Cats to the Cherries, second of the season already. I've got to say, I'm liking him early doors. He's, he's tipped for a big move in the summer to a Premier League side. We're the team that has snapped him up within this save. And he's off to a brilliant start. Already two goals in four. Sunderland in front. And for Solanke, only the one goal, but nice for him to get the assist there as well. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, it's such a weak goal to concede that. The amount of time and space for better guard, that's awful for me. Absolutely awful. And a run with games without a clean sheet is going to continue. Um, that's te that's oh, I'll tell you what, there, there are some moments where I surprise myself with just how badly I've performed there. What kind of defense was that? It was Jack Clark. Oh, great save by Jose Sarr. As this game has exploded into life here. Around halfway through the first half, his bidding is also denied as well. Still 1-1, but there is no way it finishes this way, man. And it's not going to. The Great Chain heads in another. And Bournemouth are back in front. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh, it's got to be. It is, finally. Mini goal drought over with composure. Dominic Solanke puts the keeper on the floor and slots it in. 3-1. This game has been played 100 miles an hour. Five minutes after the restart. Still up by two, but you'd, you'd put your money on there being another goal in this game. Because both teams are going all out. As Tyler plays it into Billing, who's once again been brilliant from the middle of the park in this game. And Sinistera... Finds Solanke. Oh, yeah, he's back. It's taken him a while, but finally, Dominic Solanke has had a game where he's looked at his best. An assist and two goals as the Cherries go up by three. Oh, goodness gracious me. This is ridiculous. Matthias Cunha heads in the corner. It's 4-2. 25 minutes to go, and it's, it's not over yet. This is crazy, man. Oh, I did say this year we might struggle defensively, so if that's the case, we just need to score more. Let's just say the Cherries receive that message. Luis Sinistera wraps it up and restores the free goal cushion. 5-2, seven goal thriller on the south coast. Yep, first goal for the club for Luis as well, but most importantly, Dominic Solanke back firing. And Lord knows we need that if we are to pull away from the bottom end of the table. Not a welcome return for Gary O'Neill back at the Vitality, but a huge, much-needed win for the Cherries. Buzzing with that one. And as we see directly after the win, uh, Adam Smith says he needs more games. And, I mean, if you want more games, I'm happy to let you go in January. 32 years old now, Smith. Been here for a decade, but we're, of course, prioritising the young players. But this is an interesting one. Uh, Lloyd Kelly comes to us and says, Hi, boss. Good to see you. It's great things are going so well for me and the team at the moment. I don't think I've ever enjoyed my football as much as I am right now. I'm happy at the club, so I was wondering if this might be a good time for us to talk about me renewing my contract. Um... It's really frustrating, though, because, like I said, in this say we're trying to do things realistically. Because of that player conversation there, you might say, well, based on what's going on in the save right now, Kelly's been in great form. When he's played, he's done really well. Two clean sheets and six league games. That's averaging one in every three. Um, and I really like him as well. Versatile player, can play both left back and centre half as well. Very comfortable on the ball. But, as we know, he hasn't signed a contract with Bournemouth in real life. And there's a very good chance he's going to be moving on to maybe Spurs, Newcastle United... I've even seen Juventus possibly throwing their hat into the ring as well. So for realism, I might just have to let him go. He's, he's a great defender. I'm a big fan of his. But I think for realism, I might just have to let him go to a uh, to a bigger club. We'll see. We'll see. Anyway, let's do a few more games. Uh, following game, Burnley at home as we aim for another big three points here. And back-to-back -back wins for the first time this season as you're going to pull further clear of the bottom three. Come on, you cherries really is a tough one for Lloyd Kelly. Again, I do think he probably will go in the summer. You know, those those clubs mentioned there, big, big European clubs, Liverpool, Spurs, Newcastle, and again, possibly Juve as well. What a move that would be going to Turin. Um, I, I don't think he'll stay in the summer, personally. So, oh, yes, come on. I think I'll probably have to let him go, but this guy is here to stay for the long term. Jack Clark, what a start. 
And that is going to do it. Really poor game, that one. But you know what? doesn't matter how you get your win so long as you do. 1-0 against Burnley for the first time this season. Back to that wins as well. Perfect time to go into that cup tie there as we aim to progress through to the quarters. Yep, as we see Oscar Bob win the Young Player of the Year award. What a talent he is, by the way. And uh, Erling Haaland win the Ballon d'Or as well. Uh, let's dive into the following game. Brentford away going for our third win in a row in all competitions and progress for the Carabao Cup quarter final. Reasonably strong lineup. Let's see who can make it through tonight in West London. Yeah, decent lineup out there. Tyler Adams, our top scorer in the cup. Ben is soon now. Uh, Milos Kerkes, a, a, a left back as well. Jack Clark is off to a great start on that left hand side too. So got got a few starters out there tonight, and that's that's kind of how it goes for me in the cut. Like in the first round, as Tony fires in a wicked cross to the middle by Sergio Reguilon. If, if like the further I go, the stronger my lineups get. Do you know what I mean? But ironically. <laughs> The one time where I picked some starters, we're already a goal down six minutes in. That cross, though, was unbelievable. What a ball that was to the middle. Remain. Back to Tyler. There is Clark. And really, oh, what a wonderful move. And, oh, typical. What did we say earlier? Guys, if you're new to the channel, if you see me orchestrate a nice little build-up, you best believe I'm going to bottle the finish. That should have been 1-1. Smacked it off the woodwork. And still we trail in West London. That's a lovely touch by Aaron Hickey that as the Scott gets away and plays a brilliant free ball to Ivan Tony, who's terrorising me out there and he'll get the hockey assist as Matthias Jensen offloads and there is the King of Housery, Neil Mopai, to make it to. Yeah, good good to get here. Good to knock out two PL sides in a row, but I think that's going to do it now. Brentford, two goals up and for the second time in a row, we're going to lose at the GTAC. Oh, no, 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 no. Ah, oh, too easy, too easy. 3-0, game over. Might as well empty the bench now. This is this is all but done before the break. Pie on the run. Flicks it through to Tony. And the duo have absolutely terrorised me tonight, man. Neil Pie to Ivan Tony. A brace for the pair of them. And it's four for Brentford. Yeah, nice back-to-back -back wins for Bournemouth. Brought back down to earth by the Bees. Absolutely torn apart at the GTEC. 4-0 tonight, my goodness. And so, directly after the game, uh, we'll try and pick ourselves up and hopefully find some good youth players to see who we got. Where I am still really keen on Nicholas Knight. So we'll continue to scouting on these two players here. Marcus Bailey could be all right as well. But this guy, six foot six, which is really, really exciting for me. Centre half. He's, uh, he's getting that uh, scholarship. And we'll see just how good he looks today. And from France, however, uh, two players we'll continue scouting on, but no one getting a scholarship as of yet. But from Wales, uh, keen on a couple of players here, including another centre-half, uh, Tom Payne. Who I think after four months, I will give a scholarship to as well. So two centre-halves making the academy now, and we shall see how good they are. Well, both are lower rated than the French winger, but... Both do seem to have some pretty solid potential as well. Hopefully, Nicholas doesn't drop by much. 79 to 94. Because, again, he's, he's the one I'm most excited about. Six foot six, man. Already really excited about this guy. That potential drops, though. That's, that's what I'm most worried about. Right, let's do a couple more games today. Whilst I can't see us getting anything from this game, let's see if we can pull off a massive upset. Next up, the champions away at the Etihad. Manchester City. God, I literally can't wait for the game tomorrow. I really, really can't. Massive, massive title battle between two... I guess what you could call new rivals, if you will. Liverpool versus Man City away at Anfield for them. Uh, as Haaland and Nunez go head to head. Oh, Jack Clark! In a massive title battle. I don't think it'll be a. I think it will be a long time. So before we are in a title battle, we just stunned the champions into silence at the Etihad, and Jack Clark has got his fourth already. We picked this guy up from Sunderland for 12 mil. I said it might prove to be a steal, and it's definitely looking that way already. This guy is on absolute flames. Yeah, I don't think we'll be pulling off a Leicester City-inspired season this year, going all the way to win a championship in our second year in the top flight. But if you can say that you've beaten Chelsea, Spurs and Manchester City in one half of the season, that's pretty good going, isn't it? But I don't think it's going to happen now. Julian Alvarez sparing Man City's blushes and preventing a huge scalp at the Etihad Stadium for Bournemouth. Nice finish by the Argentine. 
and it is 1-1 with 22 minutes to play. Okay, now it just comes about, can we hold on to a point? Well, like we said earlier, wins will always be considered good results and losses always considered bad results. But draws are subjective. Sometimes they're bad, sometimes they're good. In this case, they're great. That's a solid point away at the Champions Star. Right, let's do one more and we'll end on this. Our final game today is Bournemouth legend Eddie Howe returns to the vitality with his Newcastle United team. Let's bounce back here after no wins in two. Come on, you cherries. Yeah, the, uh, the the rise we've talked about with Bournemouth um, was done through primarily uh, Eddie Howe, and that's why he'll uh, he'll always be a legend around these parts. Even though uh, after uh, after many many years at the helm, he was eventually replaced after a relegation to the Championship. I, I do see him going back there one day, m m maybe not for a while, but I I think one day he will return as a manager. As Luis Sinistera wraps off a lovely move. And the cherries have the opener. But he might be a legend here. But we're not going to show him any mercy at all. We want a big win to close out today. And it's Sinisteri's second of the year to put us in front. Alexander Izak through to Kieran Trippier. We know he can whip a ball in. Down this right-hand side. And he does just that. So the far post where Eddie Anderson has a free header. And in the end, Nato does well to stand him up and palm it away. Still up by one. But Newcastle's team, as we know, star-studded these days. I'll be very surprised if it remains this way for the remainder of the game. Still 1-0, but Newcastle now coming out of the shells a little bit, looking for that leveller. As Anderson feeds through Gordon, and now Batarina also denied by NATO. Still 1-0. Uh, still Martin Batarina here at the Vitality. Ah, he looks better in red and black, in my opinion. <laughs> for those that uh, didn't watch last year, I did a Bournemouth football manager save. And Batarina, the Batman, was one of our best players. He was class, mate. And as we're still leading by one here. Free to go before the break. Newcastle are now starting to get a foothold in the game. Starting to come forward. And that leveller is definitely on the cards here. Here's Elliot Anderson. Dispossessed by Zabani, though. Now, chance for a quick counter. If you can feed through Solanke, he can... And Dominic drills in the second. Sluggish start for Solanke, but now starting to get it sorted a little bit. It's his fourth of the year. Bournemouth tuning up. Isaac, what a ball. What a ball. And Harvey Barnes makes it 2 1. Wow. I was controlling Zabani there. Just trying to intercept any kind of ball through. And in the end, I mean, look at this for a ball by Alexander Isaac. That's amazing. Talk about threading the needle. And it's the former Fox with the finish to make it 2-1. 23, uh, 27 minutes to go, sorry. Can we hold on, unlike at the Etihad? Sinistera beats Kieran Trippier. Now back to Sinesi, and the right back is, uh, well, put it this way, there's a lot of space down left-hand side due to poor position in there. And this should be free, and it will be a Solanke can finish it. He's put one man on the floor, and he has got his second of the game to surely wrap it up. Bournemouth 3, Newcastle 1, Dom is finally getting it sorted. Yep, good things come to those who wait, and after a struggling start to the season, it's now 5 goals and 11 for Dominic Solanke as he starts to replicate the form he's showing in real life. And for Bournemouth as well, 3 wins in 4 and 10 points taken from 12. It's our best run of form as you're up to a season-high 8th in the table as well. Long way to go, but third the way through, nice encouraging patch here from the Cherries. But that'll do it for today's episode of the Realistic Crimmer, guys, so big thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you haven't enjoyed this episode, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the next episode of the Realistic Career Mode as we play for the remainder of the first half of the season and get through to the January window as well very soon.